Hey there, and welcome to You Talk. We connect with extraordinary people across Canada and ask them about their stories, passions, and experiences. I'm your host, Ryan Funk. As we're looking ahead to spring and summer, and COVID restrictions easing in many provinces, many are cautiously optimistic about what the future holds for festivals and cultural events. A group from the Greater Victoria area is on that boat, ready for the possibility of hosting their folk festival this summer. Let's sit down with members of Folktoria to find out about this celebration of diversity and unification. My name is Melvin, I'm with the uh, uh, Sons of Norway Folk Dancers in, in Victoria, and it's also director of the Greater Victoria Folk Festival Society. I've been uh, doing Norwegian dance since uh, 1986 and performed, of course, at Folk Fest and, and now at Victoria. So. Hi, um, I'm Pam Rudy. I'm wearing my Ukrainian heritage blouse, mom embroidered. Uh, it was the first dance group that I participated in back uh, when Folk Fest was a festival. And it was in Veselka, the Ukrainian dance group. But since that, I've been with four other performing groups and a recreational dance group, Sanich International Folk Dancers, for the past 40 years. And that's, I guess, my affiliation with Votoria is more now with Sanich International. And it's just a nice way of continuing the festival that we used to have in the old days and bringing new people to the community, as well as people who already are in the community and just sharing our cultures. Oh, hi, Ryan. Thank you for this interview and this opportunity to you and uh, you multicultural. Um, so Sonia Gruel is my name and I represent the um, Shani Punjab Dance Performing Arts and Heritage School. Uh, we organized uh, together in 1993. We were a group of 13 friends who didn't feel that our culture was being represented. And um, I had been dancing quite a bit in the community. Um, my social life involved uh, participating in um, what we call Sangeet parties. They're sort of like a baby shower. And so there are women gathering, they sing. So when I was a teen, I was always dancing and I loved it. And I did my solo dances and I saw my aunties. And so I thought, you know, I like to continue this. And eventually mother started just asking me, you know, can you teach our daughter? And I thought, okay. So it was just a small little thing. And then <clears throat> pardon me. Um, then I got a, together with a group of 13 friends, as I mentioned, and we started to perform. Um, one of our first performances was uh, during the opening of the 1994 Commonwealth, Sanish Commonwealth um, pool. And so from there, uh, we started getting into the community. We joined the, I think then it was called the Music Festival, and now it's called the Greater Victoria Performing Arts Festival. and um, you know, I met Sheila Blake back then. And um, so we got into the community, we danced and we grew. And um, and Peter Brimacombe is another familiar name who gave us our first home at the St. Margaret School, uh, which is actually my uh, uh, alma mater. <laughs> uh, so, um, and then from there, um, we formed our official dance organization. We had about 60 uh, children in 1996 uh, with the help of uh, support of parents um, and uh, we've been dancing since we've um, we've been in part of the community we've um, it's not just bringing um, culture awareness to you through dance uh, but we also have sort of developed a leadership program where we look for and support opportunities for all kinds of things like we had a scholarship for uh, educational scholarship um, and um, we also I also have supported many organizations for example uh, the current uh, Diwali event held by the Hindu Parisha temple uh, started in 1997 and we were the first organization that performed there we it was a two-hour show it was our very first show we did the four, first for first hour and so we're integral to not just the Indian community, um, but we're also building bridges with many cultural groups. Um, I then also, like everybody here, 
uh, we got it, we started performing at the Folk Festival, which is the production of the Intercult Greater Victoria Intercultural Association of Victoria. And that's where we flourished and again was one of our first performances and we stayed with it right to the end. Uh, so that is our uh, home to us as well. So, um, and also the current India Fest that happens, again, we, the Shani Punjab Dance School, helped build that as well. For the first five years, we performed endlessly till it got its name. So we've been quite a bit involved as a, as a dance organization, organization in the community. So Hi, I'm uh, Carrie Papier. I'm on the board of uh, the Greater Victoria Folk Festival Society, and uh, I sing in uh, English and French. Uh, Canadian folk song, and also participate in a, a group that sings nautical songs. So we're, we're picking up the heritage of work, mishmash Canadian. So it's appropriate for me to have a mishmash of uh, cultural inputs. Uh, I was uh, folk fest. Uh, I started going to folk fest in, in 1973, uh, singing my uh, folk sub club, uh, and I never. I have never experienced anything better than being in a community of various uh, cultural groups, uh, singing, dancing, and making music and happiness together. Uh, so that's that's why it's this is important to me. It's a, an important part of the, the culture of Victoria, and, and we like to rely on people who are in the community rather than like the other folk festivals where they have headliners from all over the place. We're, we're really drawing on our cultural richness here. My name is Nara Doshanovic and I have been with the Saanich International Folk Dance Club uh, for 20 years now. I moved to Victoria in the year 2001 and that is when I joined Saanich International Folk Dancing Club. Um, I am um, here representing kind of a Balkan part. I'm from former Yugoslavia. And my uh, um, heritage is Serbian, born in Croatia, which kind of confuses people. Uh, I believe that um, I saw a proverb yesterday. Apparently, it's an Irish proverb that says, before you give a weapon to man, teach them uh, how to dance. Uh, which is kind of interesting. I see there was a time when, when folk dancing was taught in school, and that was what, what I was doing as well as a young youngster back in Croatia, uh, as a part of a physical education to get fit, not to really learn dances from different parts of the world. But, but now I think the latest uh, mission of the international folk dancing, recreational folk dancing here in the world, but particularly here in North America, is uh, really to contribute to peace, to peace through getting to know each other, uh, sharing a dance, sing songs, uh, food uh, in particular, just getting to know each other. And, and, and chances are uh, we are not going to fight if we learn uh, uh, and embrace our uh, what is in common. First of all, focus on what is in common uh, and, and embrace our differences. We are just, that's all what it is. So. Uh, uh, my mission moving forward is going to be, I did organize in the past uh, a few times uh, teaching of the folk dancing in schools. So I will go back to that again. And I, I think if kids, I just saw um, my daughters, I was used to uh, organize folk dancing, teaching folk dancing when my younger daughter was in elementary school, uh, Rick, uh, Willows Elementary School here in Victoria. Uh, in grade um, six, I believe. So there was a post on the Facebook and one of her friends said, oh, that's your mom. I remember when she was teaching. I mean, and that was a years ago. <laughs> My daughter is now 30. <laughs> so it's uh, definitely for me, a vehicle to bring a peace and more joy to the world. And I think this this group of individuals is a great example of that kind of mentality and mindset of bringing people together and through dance, just celebrating different cultures and backgrounds. And who would like to talk a little bit about Folktoria? Who would like to go first? So what do we say about Folktoria? Well, first of all, I just want to say that uh, we um, 
the name Foctoria, we had voted on, um, you know, as a group back when we first formed. And I have to say, Melvin came up with this name and we voted on several names. And so, um, and I think the background of the name, for example, is bringing the folk culture that we all represent, but we also represent the larger uh, community. Um, and then the, the, the ending part is Victoria. So it's co a combination, right, of those two words. Uh, but it, it's brilliant and it's uh, been uh, hitting home with many people and uh, we were looking for something simple to say. Um, <laughs> and uh, definitely bringing that word folk. Um, I, anybody can um, I, I, anybody can jump in here. Um, so with Folktoria, where do we start? Uh, so basically after the Canada 150 uh, in, uh, celebration, uh, several organizations, uh, representatives of those organizations got together and we felt that <clears throat> because we had, uh, many of us perform quite a bit in different events. And so we see each other quite often and the conversation sort of began, well, you know, you know, do you remember the folk festival, <laughs> how, you know, uh, bringing back those memories and we just felt that something was missing for people who are so passionate about sharing their culture and have been doing it consistently, um, you know, committed to to their culture and their organizations. So um, we then decided to, uh, we had enough interest at that time and uh, we decided to move forward. We had also um, at, uh, at a later point invited, uh, um, I mentioned a name, Sheila Blake, uh, the founder of the ethnic portion of the Greater Victoria Performing Arts Festival uh, on board as well. And then February 5th, 2018, we formed the Greater Victoria Folk Festival Society. The first festival was was in 2018. It was a one day festival. We and the next year we expanded to a two day festival over Saturday Sunday. And then the pandemic hit, and so we did virtual events for the for the last two years. And we're definitely hoping to get back into Victoria's Centennial Square for the for the weekend first weekend of June this year. So we're, that's our current plan. We are listening to the, all the provincial health uh, ministers and. And just hopefully they'll loosen the restrictions to let us um, go forward and have a have a large audience. So. That's what I've been hearing from a lot of different organizations and like performers that they are really ready to get to these festivals, events, stages because it's. I mean, it's only been like two years, but it's it's been a long <laughs> two yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Centennial Square holds a lot of history for us because it's where Folk Fest was primarily. And it's, it's such a wonderful location because you can come into it from about three sides, plus see overhead from the garage if you go up there, which is wonderful. But it's just a, a nice meeting place with a fountain in the middle and, and a fairly good stage. And the city has been very supportive of us being there. Yes, that's that's correct, Joan. And also, you know, with Folktoria, it's um, coming together of all the different cultural groups and organizations and new ones always show up every year, which is wonderful. And um, it's really just an opportunity to put these groups, these representatives at the forefront. Um, you know, this is their festival. We want to showcase the best. One of the things that I think really highlights during Folktoria is the volunteer aspect. It's intended to be volunteer participation, no expectation of, of money coming. People bring their, their talents and share them, whether that's through singing or dancing or playing instruments. And to be able to pull off a two-day event and have the number of volunteers to be able to run things on a smooth level and have people that can take turns, whether it's doing MC work for the stage performances or people who help in the information booth, all the food vendors, people that come. You know, it's nice to think that you know there people aren't looking at the festival as a way to to go and earn money for a performance. It's all expected to be on a volunteer um, 
giving basis. Well, and it's part of <clears throat> sharing with others what might be available to them, right? A lot of these are opportunities for people to go, oh, I would like to learn mm -hmm. how to. So it, it really is a, an opportunity for sharing uh, knowledge because not everybody knows that there's an Italian uh, cultural association or a Scottish cultural association. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say that a lot of, uh, we have a lot of support from the city and the province and from the downtown Victoria Business Association as well. We've been very, very kindly treated uh, and uh, have been awarded quite a lot of, of funding from, from those three groups in particular, also very well supported by some businesses in the city. So there's, it's not just the cultural, um, it's not just the cultural associations and, and troops they're supporting this, um, but also the, the city itself misses it. It's a unifying of just several different entities and individuals and organizations coming together yeah. to make this all possible. And we've had a couple of uh, evenings where or afternoons where people have come and performed for others and then taught their dances and get it. So we've all had an opportunity to each other's natural dances as well. We've been using the word folk a lot and when you say folk, um, it, it invokes different ideas in other and very uh, in people's minds. Uh, for each of you, when when we're looking at folk festivals, folk music, folk dancing, folk stories, what does that word folk mean to you? For me, it brings back the the stories and history that I've grown up with that make me understand my culture. The stories that my mother told me that my grandmother's passed on to her. My mother is very passionate about her Punjabi culture, and um, she has shared that with me over the years. Uh, whether, you know, uh, so whether it was being pulled into watching certain things or understanding, you know, um, a recipe or, um, you know, a song. And so I learned the language to hear. So that's what folk means to me. Folk means that heritage that we identify, I identify as a a Punjabi person and the culture that it that that comes with it, uh, the, the ways of doing things, the beliefs, the all those things. Yeah, that's what I see as folk. In Norway, uh, the dances that we do here, we we try to follow the dances that are still being done in Norway, and and but some of the dances we do with the Spanish folk, international folk dances are are not done in the in the rich, originating countries anymore. Um, the biggest uh, problem has been Yugoslavia due to the breakout uh, breakup of those into separate countries and uh, and migration of people. The, there's dances that we do that nobody left in that in that former um, you know, culture is recognizes they've lost it when they've been forced to move from one from one area to to the other. So it's it's a preservation of of uh, history of of a culture that. So I have a different take. Uh, when I was five, I listened to the Volga Boatman song sung by the Red, Red Choir or whatever it was. And it just made me cry just naturally. And so when, when I think of folk music, I think of music that comes from people and that touches people. And it, it's not commercialized. It doesn't have a, doesn't have any kind of way of, of reaching you other than being passed from one person to another uh, right up until the century. So it, it, it is a lifeline to people's hearts through the ages. And I just want to uh, just touch on the idea, the, the uh, Mel's idea about preservation. Um, I think the theme is sort of across the board here. With me, the challenge I find is I'm trying to hold on to the, the that preserving that piece. Technically, our dance that we teach is called Bhangra. And Bhangra is done to um, rhymes and hymns that are actually sung in person. But nowadays, to keep the youth engaged, like Carrie just mentioned the word commercialize, some of the songs, well, they're, <laughs> they're modernized a bit. And, you know, if you go to an Indian wedding, you hear them and youth perform to them. So we we're, we're have challenges of balancing that, but we're doing our best still to keep youth engaged it's um it's important for us yeah that can be a real struggle in this modern digital age to keep something kind of organic natural in a form where once you start putting it online it starts changing and evolving into a new form that doesn't have the same feel 
to it anymore. Yeah, the the instruments are still there, the 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 hymns are still there, but you we have to be very selective what we choose for we choose for songs. Um, again, bringing back that folk piece. Folktoria, it's it, it it's had a digital component with COVID nineteen. Typically, what does this two day festival look like? We have performances that are scheduled. We have an opening ceremonies. We invite our sponsors. We invite. Um, um, members of organizations uh, to speak and just start off our event. It's got dance, it's got songs, performing, I guess that falls under for performing arts, singing, um, bands, um, sort of we open it up to the culture groups. Food trucks. Food trucks. food trucks, food vendors, not necessarily like if you, uh, the folk festival actually um, didn't have as many trucks back then but now there seems to be more trucks and uh that are being used uh, but we still have the food vendors as well right nada we had the uh victoria cult uh, victoria canadian filipino association that they are, don't have a food truck but they they're there and they they share their food and um we had the polish uh organization there was selling their food and um area two wasn't it sorry joan Hungarians. We like. I think they were planning to for 2020, just before COVID hit. They were really uh, gung ho coming on board. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this year. Um, so you know, for example, uh, there's. We had uh, prior to COVID, we had 45 organizations lined up. We've grown from 15 in the first year, I believe, 35 uh, in 2019, and by by 2020 we were at about 45. Some of, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, some of the groups are, you know, uh, we've got uh, cultures represented is the indigenous, um, uh, Sons of Norway, which uh, Melvin is here, uh, the Chinese, the Scottish, uh, Joan is here, and um, the Irish, the Punjabi, uh, the Hindi, uh, Polish, uh, Hawaiian, Philippine, Spanish, Portuguese, Croatian, um, the creation, uh, sorry, what was that? Japanese too. Japanese, thank you, yes. And uh, with the Croatian, they've always, um, they participated more in the virtual part, but they're really looking forward to, uh, they were lined up for 2020. Uh, British, uh, Balkan, I'm not sure the Balkan, what, um, somebody help me out, what area do they represent? The Balkan babes. Bulgaria. Um, well, not just Bulgaria, Macedonia and Serbia and uh, uh, yeah, this, that, that sort of area above Greece right up to Georgia. Okay, excellent. Um, the Ukraine, which Nada spoke about and Hungarian, Russian, Italian, French, African and German are some of the cultures we have uh, brought on board. So it's literally <laughs> almost the entire world kind of celebrated. <laughs> almost there. We, we still are working on the Greek and, and the Korean have just uh, are going to participate tomorrow at our meeting or the first meeting. So we're excited about that. Um, so the like, festival itself, uh, there's a main stage. There's only one uh, people. Some people know about the festival and come on purpose to spend the day or spend part of the day, but there's a lot of walk-bys and walk-throughs and people get snagged by the happy. Earlier on, um, I can't remember who it was, but uh, someone mentioned, you know, volunteerism really helps make this all come together. How can people help out uh, for the June uh, is hopefully going to be the, the festival. It's going to be happening in person, hopefully following provincial health guidelines and everything. But how can people help volunteer and make this a reality? Well, uh, we have a email, <laughs> folkfestivalinfo at gmail.com. That is a way to connect with us. We have a Facebook page. Um, you know, please, you're welcome to message us to participate and get involved. I have uh, always volunteered all my life um, with different organizations. And I truly think volunteers are volunteer work we do because we want to do it. There's a passion behind it. So volunteering is, is uh, without it, we're not here. So um, nothing really gets happened for, you know, for a lot of things. So 
um, yeah, we're, we value the volunteers and really appreciate everybody's effort and we're grateful from bottom of our hearts. Yeah. So we need volunteers like coordinators for different things like the food trucks and uh, the garbage and recycling and, and uh, somebody to coordinate with like we need that kind of role as well as needing just human bodies to do some of the, the work during the festival itself of, of helping us uh, keep things flowing right yeah like site there's a site coordinator there's there we need a, a volunteer coordinator to just vol you know manage the volunteer <laughs> <laughs> um you know we just want to make sure they have a point of contact it does get busy those two days and uh, you can plan the best you can and more minds are better than one. And, but the, during those two days, so much can happen. So you, um, I think for volunteers, it's really important that, you know, they feel that they're contributing and uh, they have a point of contact. Um, but, but we need volunteers, you know, at the information booth that represents a society, um, and, you know, more volunteers means people can take shorter shifts, enjoy enjoy the event um, um, there's a lot of pre and post you know the setup the takedown um, yeah yeah <laughs> it's just it's endless every every uh, effort is, is required so yeah we've also tried to incorporate a children's craft area and have volunteers who can teach different crafts and if they have a cultural aspect to it and have different people sharing that aspect of their culture so that's another place where volunteers could be well used i know an email address was mentioned but what are some other ways people can find out more about Victor uh folktoria well the the facebook site is very good and has some examples of those and that's that's a really it's a valuable way to contact the, the group there's a website to just want to add to carry uh it's www.folktoria.ca and our emails on there, and also to become a member. <laughs> it's information on there as well. How about we just uh, quickly go around through everyone and you just share your favorite aspect of the festival and maybe what you're looking forward to. Meeting, meeting people in the audience who are having a splendid time, who didn't even know that they were going to have a splendid time. That's, what, that's my favorite. My favorite part is there, there's a bit of uh, four space in front of the stage and, and of course, um, you know, preschool children always like to come up and stand in that area and, and yeah. do their own dance while, while they hear the music and see the performers. So yeah. it's always cute to see the, you know, them get involved. But the Sandwich Folk Dancers actually had a, a group from the uh, Victoria School of Performing Arts. They came and joined and they picked up some of the dances that we were demonstrating on stage. And there was, there was just no more room on the stage. So it was an overflow that came down to the, to the front area and they they had a great time too so yeah the music i love the music all, and watching all the other performers but just the music and the colorful costumes and just seeing lots of smiling faces i agree with everybody else for me it is just uh, a place almost like coming to a village where everybody are happy uh, and uh, is so much joy um, sounds of the music and particularly when a familiar dance comes that I grew up with that can be very emotional actually uh, for me so it is it is true joy true joy just to, uh, to see people that are happy there is a good food that smell of the food music what else do you need in life um, for me, I just, I'll just, I think I'm, I'm the last speaker, but I just wanted to say that it's many things that everybody's already covered, but uh, it's, it's the, it's the people and to see something come together with everyone's effort um, and then hearing the music in the background. And, you know, when we start the show, the, when we start the, um, the Folktoria, we get, the sound uh, coordinator to make sure we get the folk music going right away. You know, <laughs> you know. Do you have any? So it's just it just makes the day like you're in an environment. It's so magical and um, um, and to see everybody and to see all the different aspects um, come together and everyone you talk to, you constantly connect with them. You know, whether it's the St. John's ambulance, uh, the performers. You know, are you doing okay? Was it well? And 
um, everybody, you know, it's important to get their feedback and, and, you know, like everyone said, the music really, uh, for me, um, the singing, the music, all of that is, is really, really important. It touches my heart and yeah, it gives me such joy. So that, that's wonderful. Folktoria will be held Saturday, June 4th and Sunday, June 5th, 2022. For information to volunteer, to sponsor, or to part or to participate, please email the Greater Victoria Folk Festival Society at folkfestivalinfo at gmail.com. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was Utah, and have yourself a good one.